Hello world, today we're working on a 2006 Mazda 6, well, one of those. This uh, particular one is a 2000, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, cancel that, scratch that. Uh, what I meant to say was this particular version is the hatch slash wagon, whichever one you want to call it. As you saw, we're going to get those things out of the way. Loosen up this wiring harness and also the bracket bolts for the EGR valve. Pretty interesting place to put it, but there I shifted angles. That way you can see it better. There are three bolts holding this thing in place. Now it's not going to come straight out. The manifold has to be moved a little bit. Right now I just want to want it loose. So there, see it's loose. So that's set. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove these vacuum lines. There are three vacuum lines here. That's one in the middle, one on the left, and one on the right. I ended up forgetting to remove the one on the right, but I get to it afterwards. Now we have a total of six bolts, if I remember correctly. That's three, that's four, that's five, six, just kidding, seven, eight. All right, eight bolts. Now the way I decided to do it was not to remove the coolant lines that go to the lower part of the throttle body so once I get it loose I move it forward and to the side and you also want to pull back on the EGR valve because that tubing goes a little bit deep in there so you can pull it forward towards you and then just move it off to the side and that way you don't have to disconnect the other lines to the throttle body and then you don't have any coolant leaking all over the place. I tend to do this with a lot of vehicles because it just works for me. If you want to go ahead and disconnect it completely, you can. I've done so in certain instances where I know I'm going to need as much space as possible, but I've managed to get along with it just fine. So here we go. Press and pull. Ta-da. All right, so here are the six plenum gaskets. You do need to replace these um, because nine out of 10, if you don't replace them, you'll end up with a vacuum leak when you go ahead and reinstall them, especially if they haven't been replaced in forever. Now, go ahead and cover these holes. I use these blue towels. You can use tape or whatever you'd like. Here we have the three coils in the back. These are the hardest to get to, obviously, since you have to remove the manifold. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these. Now these are the original coils. So as you'll see, I end up having a little bit of a complication with these. Uh, I end up recommending replacing at least the boots at a bare minimum. Uh, in the end, we ended up replacing the entire coil assembly. See, that's not coming out. That guy does not want to come out easily, and definitely this guy does not. See, it just came off the boot. So, anywho, I did end up replacing those three rear coils at that time, and it actually ended up jumping into a valve cover gasket replacement since the seals uh, were allowing oil to get into the spark plug tube so that got into a bigger job and I'll make a video for that it's not much different since you need to do these steps and then take off a, a few more things to get the valve covers off So these were stubborn, so a pair of needle nose pliers and these weird looking pliers will definitely come in handy. See, it just doesn't want to come off. The spring inside the coil was getting stuck to the spark plug tip, 
and it just did not want to come out. So I had to grab these needle nails, pull it out. See, that one ended up going back in, but this last one, it just pulled on the spring too much. And once I got it off, it did not want to sit back in. And I said, well, um, might as well replace these. See, that guy is just being straight stubborn. So I'm pulling and trying to get that end off, but see, it just stayed like that and it's done for. It's gonna have to get replaced. Boom, all right, that's out. Now for the actual spark plugs. Here we go. Now I'm only gonna show this rear part since I've split this into two, a two-part video. But obviously once you get here, it's easy for the most part. Unless you're in this situation that's about to come up where something is inside there and it doesn't allow you to get the socket to sit correctly on the spark plug, which you'll see in the middle cylinder. I guess a piece of the spark plug broke off. and would not allow it to sit in there. And let me loosen the spark plug off. All right, so I'm done with this cylinder. Moving on to the next one here. See, it was just kind of spinning. So here it's still not sitting. Then I looked inside. And I said, hmm, there has to be something in there. But there was also some oil in there, so I had to clean that up first to get a better view. So once I did that, I stuck this little screwdriver with a metallic end to see if anything me metal was in there, but I think it was more the porcelain part of the spark plug, maybe. Anyways, I ended up taking off whatever object was in there and then finally got this out. All right, so that's off. You get your new ones in. Make sure to use a little bit of anti-seize. If you don't have the bottle, then just get the little, the little baggies, and you just put them on in there. But yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one if you need to see it. But the front ones are very straightforward, so typically you won't need help with that one. I'll still put it because why not? All right, if you found this video to be helpful in any way or form, please make sure to hit that like button as it helps me out. And yeah, toodles.